about the, the world, the, um, the Earth, as a global research community, do you think that there is one set of bioethical rules or one framework that is equally applicable? So my youngest daughter asked me, this is, you're asking all these personal questions, literally three weeks ago, this is the high school senior who's taking a course called Theory of Knowledge. And they're studying different epistemological approaches to knowing things. And they were on the unit called Ethics. So she thought, I've got an expert at home, so I can at least test out some of my ideas. And she came home, Hallie Rose is her name, and she said, um, so do you think there are any universal, are, are ethics universal? And I said, yes. And she said, good, I got that one right. And we had, but we had a long, it was, a, I st say it humorously, because this is going to be recorded for posterity, and I don't want her to be embarrassed. But it was a, a very important, for me, uh, question to be asked. And my initial answer is, yeah, at certain levels, we are in a global, I mean, whether we go back to Van Rensselaer or Potter, and whether his definition of bioethics, you know, the really the ethics of the planet um, is what we're, we're talking about. I have a certain sympathy for that, that idea, that there are certain ethical precepts and ideas that are human, that have to do with who we are uh, occupying the, the planet. Some of them are pretty easy, that I think most people would agree um, that harming others is ethically wrong. I think most people would agree that slavery is wrong. Um, and it's not a question of the relativism of all these things. Well, in this country, it's OK to do this and, and not. I'm hoping that in the next 20 or 30 years, we will probably work without borders in ethics. There really does need to be a, an ethics without borders initiative. Many of us are involved in work in, in different countries, and we see this on a, on a regular basis. Um, Ironically, we also see people in other countries adopting almost uncritically American bioethics ideas. You know, they've read uh, Tom Beecham and Jim Childress's famous book, Principles of Biomedical Ethics. I was at a meeting in, in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, giving a talk about research ethics about 10 years ago. And a gentleman got up and asked me a question. He said, I'm from Ghana, and I've just re finished reading the third edition of Beecham and Childress, and I found chapter four to be very different from the previous version. Uh, Dr. Meslin, what do you think about the difference between edition number two and edition number three of Beecham and Childress's Principles of Biomedical Ethics? And this was a gentleman from Ghana at a meeting in, in Johannesburg, South Africa, which is kind of the flip side of are there any universal ethical principles, any universal ethical ideas, yes, many of them have to do with human security and safety and, and integrity. Um, but then here's someone who's read somewhat in a very detailed way, almost a content analysis of arguably one of the more popular and well uh, distributed books in the history of bioethics, and has adopted it almost as if it were his own his own mantra. So I think in some ways the, you know, the long answer typically uh, to the short question is there are things that are universal and, and absolutely must be. You know, when, when Nuremberg spoke of crimes against humanity, it was speaking about something that was, if not self-evident, then certainly understandable. And if it was understandable and it could therefore become applicable, whether it's in a court uh, or in an IRB or somewhere else, then I think we've got a little insight into, into the universality of, of certain ethical principles.